What's up guys? Today we're gonna to take a look at one of the more popular but also underappreciated programs on Linux. And really, this is a program that's available on all Nix-based systems. So that's BSD, macOS, and Linux distros. And that program is HTOP. So if we take a look at it on GitHub, of course we can see that this is free and open source software. It is under a GPL 2.0 license. And if we scroll down to the introduction, we can see that HTOP is a cross-platform interactive process viewer. So in layman's terms, that means it's a task manager, but it's actually much better than a lot of the GUI task managers that you see on Windows or even the ones that are included in many of the JustWorks Linux distros because this one runs on the command line. So you could use HTOP to say restart your window manager or some other uh, graphical program if the graphics are glitching out on your system. You could just do that from a TTY. Now, despite HTOP being a really cool and a fairly small, like fairly minimal command line program, there's some people out there who consider it to be useless bloat because there is another simpler utility called top, which more or less does the same thing. And top is already gonna be included on all Linux systems by default. But top is a little bit less intuitive than htop in my opinion. And I still think that htop looks a little bit nicer. So it's a little bit of bloat that I can live with on a system like this, but you should still learn how to use top, like be familiar with it just in case you're on a Linux system where you can't install HTOP because of course, this is a default program. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice at the top of your HTOP uh, and the top of mine is the load that is on individual CPU threads. For you guys, this is probably going to show as uh, different bars, sort of like this. Uh, but mine looks really crazy because of the Threadripper. It can't properly display bars, or if it did, it would just be a really, really long list of all the CPU threads, which looks really ugly. So anyway, uh, I know, first world problems. Let's take a look at HTOP inside of a VM. So I'll go ahead and run it in this Kali VM. And now you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So we've got these different bars for each one of your CPU threads and in this particular VM, I have eight threads dedicated, so I've got zero through seven. Uh, and yeah, this is just the individual load. You can see the percent load that is on each of the CPU threads. And actually, one thing that you can do, a couple of things that you can do in um, HTOP that you can't do in top, at least as far as I know, is you can display, uh, in addition to the um, just the load that's on different CPU threads. You can show the frequency of those different CPU threads. And you could also show the temperature, but I'm pretty sure I don't have lib sensors installed. Yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna bother installing that in a VM, uh, but you get the idea. This is another thing that you might want to take a look at, especially if you're uh, overclocking or you're into anything where you're going to require very high uh, CPU temperatures and you're gonna be trying to get really high clock speeds. So that's a cool thing that you can do with uh, HTOP and I'll just leave it for the rest of this demonstration. But yeah, you've got all the load on different CPU threads here at the top. And then below that, you've got your RAM usage. So right now you can see that I'm using 700 and about 737 megs of RAM out of 7.76 gigabytes. Beautiful thing on Linux distros is having uh, idles under one gig most of the time. Then there's the amount of swap file that is being used, assuming that you have a swap file on your system. And then kind of to the right of all of this, we have the view with the number of tasks, the number of threads, uh, or the number of processes rather. And then over here is how many of them are actually running. So I know that this is kind of confusing to some people because you think surely lots of stuff is running, right? I have a whole Linux desktop up right here, but only one task is actually actively using the CPU. And I'm pretty sure that that's uh, HTOP. If we see, yeah, we can see that uh, HTOP is what's actively using the uh, CPU time. Everything else is just pretty much sleeping in the background waiting for user input. Uh, and you can see that if I do something like open up Firefox, for example, uh, the 
amount of tasks that are running goes up a little bit, right? It goes up while Firefox starts, and then now that Firefox isn't actually doing anything, it's not gonna show that anything's running, but if I try to load a web page like gnu.org, see, it goes back up again, and then now that the page is loaded, it's like, oh, okay, we're back down, because uh, not, we're not actually requesting time from the CPU through Firefox at the moment. Now below this is uptime, which is how long the system has been powered on for. And then coming down here, we've got the PID or the process ID, which is the number that gets assigned to each individual process when the process starts. And you might see that in some cases, the same command, like the same program is running on multiple processes. That's because these are multi-threaded programs running on multi-threaded systems. Uh, this is gonna be the case on pretty much, for with pretty much any modern program on any modern system. Now, next to the process ID is the user that that particular process belongs to. So, of course, we have some user space applications like the HTOP that I just started as Kenny, uh, but then you've got other things that are running as root, and then you've got certain things running under pull kit D, and if there were other users on the system, like say if this was a mainframe, then you would also be able to see some of those uh, tasks from other users down here as well. Now next to the user column, we have the priority level and the niceness level of each process. So you can think of niceness as, well, I guess sort of like the opposite of greediness. So on our system, we have a limited amount of CPU time, CPU resources and RAM that we can dedicate to all processes. And in some cases, like you may have a multi-user system, if you think of something like a mainframe, where we have multiple users that are running different processes and all of that is taking place on the same machine and they all have to share those limited resources. Now right now there's no problems because most of the resources in the system are free, but let's say that I wanted to stream a video in my browser and I also wanted to play a video game and hell, I'm on a Kali Linux system, why don't I also run Hashcat to try to crack somebody's password uh, in the background. If I'm doing all of that at once, then it's going to use up all of the resources on the system. Uh, and then everything is going to start lagging or every application that's on the same niceness level is gonna to start to lag. But if I set one of the programs, maybe I'm going to set the password cracker uh, to have a higher niceness level, then it's going to allow other applications to have more of the resources. So why don't I go ahead and do that? Um, I can just search for Hashcat. And so now I have it highlighted here and I can increase the niceness by pressing F8. And so you see the value right here is increasing and also the priority is increasing. Priority is uh, always equal to the um, uh, priority is always gonna be equal to the niceness plus 20. And you can't change the priority level directly. That uh, value is used by the kernel, but obviously you can change it indirectly by just changing the niceness value. Now, the niceness values can be anything from minus 20, which is like super real time, going to make everything else lag, to plus 19, which is completely in the background, not taking any CPU time from any other tasks that want it. But only root is able to set the niceness value of a task lower than zero. Also root is the only user that can lower the niceness of any task. Like I'm trying to lower it with F7 right now, but it's not working. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna be messing around on systems where you don't have root access, you're gonna be messing with the niceness of uh, different processes because the only way to reset that niceness is going to be for you to terminate and then restart the program. Uh, and speaking of terminating programs, let's take a look at how to do that. Um, actually, first, you should probably press F5 to enable tree mode because some commands are parents of other commands. And if you kill the parent, then you're going to kill all of the children processes. So it's a good idea to do this, especially if you're new to Linux and you're not familiar with uh, what these different commands do. Like if you're not sure what in it is, you can see that in it is the parent of every other command on a Linux system. And so if you killed this, then you would end up killing the whole system. Your whole system would crash, uh, although you can't actually do that inside of um, 
you know, inside of regular Linux systems. There are kind of some ways around it where you can kill in it, but we're not gonna be doing that in this video. Uh, so anyway, let's find something good to kill. Why don't we just kill some of these Firefoxes? Uh, so we can actually search for different programs by just pressing uh, forward slash and then start typing in the name of it. So we see Firefox here and uh, we see that it's not in, you know, it's not a parent of anything. So we can go ahead and kill this with F9. And then you see we have options over here for what kind of signal we want to send. So by default, the termination option is going to be sig term, which is 15. And you can think of this as sort of like a graceful shutdown, right? So your system's going to tell it, okay, Firefox, that's enough, time for you to close, and boom, Firefox closes. But sometimes you might get an application that's just really hung, right? Like it's not, um, it's not behaving at all. And even sig term doesn't work to kill it. So what you could do in those cases, uh, and you don't want to do this unless you have to, right? This is sort of like a um, last ditch option because sometimes you can free up memory in weird ways, but you would do sig kill. And so that's gonna just go ahead and kill the task. All right, so this is pretty much the basics of HTOP. Just thought I would make a video covering that stuff since I use this application all the time in my videos, but never really talked about what it does. Never really talked about some of the different things that you can do in it. So there you guys go. If you're new to Linux, that just demystified that program for you. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.